America needs more Titans. You've got work to do, and we've got your truck. Save up to $14,080 on Texas Titan, or get a low $399 per month lease on Armada. Now the most capable tech you own is in your driveway. Breaking tonight, another big shape up at HISD, an exclusive interview you'll see only on KHOU, breaking down what's to come. Plus, a heartbreaker in Boston, the reaction from Astros fans as we look ahead to game three here at home. Plus, snow in Texas, and that cold front is heading here. Just how low will it go? KHOU 11 News at 10 starts now. Breaking news, the man set to lead HISD as the new interim superintendent has withdrawn from the job just days after the board voted to have him replace another interim superintendent. Stephanie Whitfield breaks down the drama with an exclusive interview. The HISD school board president spoke to us exclusively tonight and she confirms the board has decided to move in another direction again. The largest school district in the state has been in turmoil for days. The board divided after a surprise motion Thursday. I move that we relieve Granita Latham of the duties of interim superintendent effective Monday, October 15, 2018, and to name Dr. Avelaro Saavedra as interim superintendent. In a heated five to four vote, HISD school board voted interim superintendent Granita Lathan out and former superintendent Abe Zavedra in, effective tomorrow. At least that was the plan. The board has agreed um, to go in a different direction. And so on tomorrow, we will be making an announcement about um, the interim superintendent appointment. HISD board president Rhonda Skillern Jones spoke to KHOU exclusively ahead of that announcement. Another board member confirms Saavedra has withdrawn his name for the position. So we have a um, vote that's going to be scheduled for Thursday morning at 8 o'clock, and um, we will then take the vote to see what the outcome is at that time. Even then, the saga may not be over. This controversy is over an interim position. The school board is still searching for a superintendent to lead the school district permanently. HISD has called a press conference for tomorrow, and they tell us Dr. Granita Lathan will be there, which gives an indication of which direction the board appears to be going next. In Houston, Stephanie Whitfield, KHOU 11 News. Snow falling in the Texas Panhandle. This video shows flakes flying about 80 miles north of Amarillo, and this cold blast is now coming our way. While it won't bring any falling snow, Brooks says it will bring falling temperatures. That's oh, yeah. pretty good. <laughs> Big time, Ron. You know, it's below freezing right now in Amarillo. Listen, if you're traveling up that way, watch out for some patchy ice on the roadways. We won't have to worry about it getting that cold here, but talk about two seasons on one weather map in one state. Currently in the 70s in Houston, it's in the 50s in Dallas. That cold air will be ours before you know it. In fact, by tomorrow morning, we're going to wake up to one of those days where it's muggy and you're thinking, where's the cold front? In fact, it'll be really muggy for some of us along the coastline. This is 6 a.m., but notice the front pushing through 50s in Huntsville, 70s at Houston, and then all of a sudden a big gust of wind comes and those temperatures drop and they'll keep dropping through the day by lunchtime, low 60s by evening commute run. We could see the 50s. So the weather forecast for daybreak, warm and humid, mid 70s by the afternoon upper 50s. Rain chances tomorrow elevated. We'll have overcast conditions and passing showers. I'll show you how long this lasts and when we'll see highs only reaching the 50s coming up. A heartbreaker in Boston tonight. The Astros lost to the Red Sox 7 to 5. The series is now tied at one game apiece tonight. We've got team coverage from Fenway to Minute Maid Park. First, let's get to Jason Bristol in Boston. And Jason, what's the what's the team saying tonight? Well, we can tell you this that Garrett Cole tonight's starter. He was disappointed by his outing, but on the other hand, he was actually proud that he was able to get into this game deep and not tax that bullpen. So certainly there are some positives when you take away this game. Certainly it was a loss, but on the other hand, the Astros came, they got their one win, and now they'll head back to Houston. Let me bring in Jeremy Booth, our KHO 11 baseball analyst, former Major League Scout. Jeremy, what's your biggest takeaway from this game tonight? You know, the Red Sox, you know, they 108 wins coming to this thing, right? You got to respect that the whole way, and, and the Astros, they didn't really have their approach. 
whether it was on the mound or whether it was at the plate, it, it just seemed like they were out of sync all night. Now, talk about out of sync. There certainly was some good moments. Marwin Gonzalez, the home run, and then obviously a little bit of a rally in the ninth. What did the Astros take away from these two games here as they head back to Houston? Well, first of all, the Red Sox aren't going to lay down for anybody. They're, they're here. David Price. But we knew that. We did, but David Price had a better start tonight than we thought. Had some struggles, worked all the way through. Start to finish is what the Astros need to do the entire way. Three games coming up at Minute Maid. And that is what this team has been waiting for, to get back home and, of course, win the next three and take this American League Championship Series and head back to the World Series. For Jeremy, I'm Jason. We'll have much more analysis on this game tonight on Sports Extra after the news. As for the story back in Houston, let's head to Marcelino Benito, who is at Minute Maid Park. Marcelino? Jason, fans left disappointed tonight. They left the ballpark not with the outcome they expected. But the good news is, as you mentioned, the Astros are coming home. They'll be home for the next three games. Let's talk about what happened tonight here at Minute Maid Park. Fans packed into the stadium to watch game two at the Astros watch party. Now, a couple times tonight here inside the stadium, fans just erupted when they came from behind to tie the game at two. They then went even crazier when they took a 4-2 lead. But then things changed. The bats went cold and the crowd got quiet here at the juice box. Fans say the Strohs had this game within reach, but they let it slip away. Now they have to take care of business at home and fans say they are ready. We gotta get them now. We gotta get them. We gotta get them. <laughs> let's get them home and let's show them that we are the champions that we are. I'll be here Tuesday, though. Oh, you're coming back? Oh, I'm Tuesday. coming Tuesday. I'll be here Tuesday. I can't oh, wait. You can definitely feel like it was emotional. It's it's like a game atmosphere. Even though it's a, uh, you know, a watch party, but everybody's into the game. You know, everybody's, all the emotions are going through. I want my boys to win. Now, the Astros are flying back to Houston tonight. We expect them to be back here around Minute Maid Park around 3 this morning. Now, I can tell you, we know Game 3 is going to be huge. It'll be here on Tuesday night at Minute Maid Park. And, Ron, I have a feeling the Astros and their fans will be ready for that one. Oh, Ron, it's back gonna to be, you. It's going to be a big difference once it comes home. All right, thank you so much, Marcelino Benito. And it was a terrific day to be a Texans fan. Texans ended the game against the Bills with a big win, 20 to 13. But we wanted to know this. Is it proper etiquette to wear Astros gear to the Texans game? Our Matt Doherty found out. The Astros aren't the only ones on a winning streak in this town anymore. Go Astros! Among the sea of red in the stands, you'll see few, if any, specks of orange. Out in the parking lot of NRG among the tailgaters, we found this guy having a beer in the background. He's rooting for the Texans during the game, but on the outside, he's all about the Astros. It was a last second thing. I didn't know I was actually going to be coming to the game today, so I don't have time to go do an extra change of clothes before I go watch the Astros game. He may have been the odd one out at the tailgate. Go Astros! <laughs> but nobody here is complaining. So I'm a big Texas fan. I'm a big Astros fan. I'm just, you know, it's all about showing the love to our, to our local team. Across town at a barbershop in the Heights. Not as sweet, but it's going to be like two to five. Little Anderson stayed up way past his bedtime last mm -hmm. night watching the baseball game. Cray has hit whenever he hasn't been doing so well. He says he's a Texans fan too, but right now he's all about the Strohs. They're the better team and they've been doing better than the Texans. Every game we watch together. Anderson's dad is sporting his Astros gear. He says wear whatever you want to the games as long as it's Houston. It's all good. I think the Texans gear at Astros game works too. And even though it's a school night, Anderson will be allowed to stay up late again tonight. And at the barbershop, he's doing something else he's not normally allowed to do. From the Heights, Matt Doherty, KHU 11 News. Yeah, I got to get one of those. When it comes to the Astros, a bet is on the line. Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo made a bet with the Police Chief of Boston. Now, if the Astros win, Boston will be sending Houston a lobster. And if the Red Sox win, we'll be sending Boston some of the finest Tex-Mex food in the world. Hey, we want to see your pictures showing off your Astros pride. Send us an email to photos at khou.com or tag us on Facebook. Our Astros coverage continues online at KHOU.com, and you can get instant updates on your phone through the KHOU app. 
Uh, coming up at 11 o'clock, Sports Extra will have team analysis of tonight's game. New tonight, a story of heroism in Montgomery County. A car carrying a couple and their baby crashed into a pond in the spring area near Burnham Wood and Northridge. Witnesses say that car started sinking fast and a good Samaritan named Tim London jumped in to help. She couldn't swim, so she was starting to panic, so I went in and swam around the car, got the baby, and then another gentleman came behind me and got her because she couldn't swim at all. Way to go, Mr. Hero. Luckily, everyone is okay tonight. Breaking tonight, Galveston Beach Patrol looking for two boys, ages 11 and 16, who are presumed to have drowned. drowned. The boys were last seen off Seawall Boulevard and 17th. Also in Galveston, two kayakers were killed this weekend. Today, Galveston Island Beach Patrol found the body of Alan Perez Pereira. They say Pereira and his friend Raul Oveda were on a kayak that overturned Saturday near Pirates Beach. Beachgoers pulled Olveta to shore, but he died later at the hospital. Pereira remained missing for nearly 24 hours before crews found him. Here's a look at tomorrow's headlines tonight. The man accused of using dating websites to lure women and then rape and rob them will go before a judge. We're blurring her Jorge Mars face because the police are asking any other potential victims to come forward and identify him in photo lineups. Investigators say he's a suspect in eight cases. The District 7 race is proving to be a fierce one, but tomorrow's debate is on hold until October 21st. Democrat Lizzie Fletcher is trying to unseat Republican John Culberson. The debate will be held at the University of Houston. And it's that time of the year already. Tomorrow, the mayor is announcing the details for the annual HEB Thanksgiving Day Parade, including the entertainment lineup. Great Day Houston's own Deborah Duncan will be the parade MC. And as usual, you can watch the parade Thanksgiving Day right here on KHOU. It's a fall favorite, the Katy Rice Festival. The way this event brings more to the community than just family fun. And change your mind how Facebook is giving you a chance to take back what you said. And spelling out what's at stake, the case of a missing journalist that has the attention of President Trump. Ted Cruz, Beto O'Rourke, the two candidates.